It is with great pleasure that I would like to greet all the delegates of this very important national consultation on diabetic retinopathy. I do apologize to the various dignitaries present as well as the distinguished delegates for not being present there in person. But having been sandwiched between our board meeting of the Public Health Foundation of India and an international travel to Harvard for my teaching commitments, I am unable to be there in Hyderabad personally much as I would have wished to. Clearly, this is a meeting that is addressing one of the most important public health challenges for India. With the rapidly rising magnitude of diabetes affecting people even at younger ages now and vision loss being a major complication of neglected diabetes, we are likely to see a huge problem of diabetic retinopathy. Unfortunately, this problem has not been adequately recognized by the people at large, not even persons suffering from diabetes and certainly even the care providers, both physicians as well as non-physicians are not entirely mindful of this problem in terms of attempting to seek an early diagnosis and effective treatment. The consequences can be catastrophic because a huge amount of avoidable vision loss will result if diabetic retinopathy is not diagnosed early and treated effectively. And this consultation therefore is a very important public health endeavor. There has been a great deal of knowledge already accumulated globally on diabetic retinopathy both in terms of the effects on vision as well as in terms of appropriate treatments which can save the vision. However, it is very important that all this knowledge is also translated into action where it is needed most and there is no doubt India needs it most. We now recognize from the results of this national situational analysis that a very large number of persons with diabetes are not aware of the problem and many of them have been neglected for long in terms of their diagnosis and treatment. And this brings to us the importance of public health research and linking it effectively to policy and action. Indeed, knowledge needs to be translated into action if it has to be of societal benefit. And science is sterile if it lacks social relevance and technology will be a mere toy if it does not have transformational benefits for the people at large. And therefore, it is very important that we not only acquire the knowledge through appropriate research, but also transform it into effective policies and programs. And this is where the whole area of implementation science or delivery science comes in to being. And here we must recognize that the purpose of research, especially public health research, is to generate evidence-based context specific, resource sensitive, culturally compatible and equity promoting recommendations for policy and practice. Here evidence based and equity promoting are the cardinal attributes. The others can possibly be dealt with. Context specificity is important, certainly context relevant, but some of the contextual factors which hinder recognition or block a program can be altered by other interventions. Similarly, while resource sensitivity is important, we can certainly augment resources through appropriate increase in government allocations or even private philanthropy. And culture is a dynamic process which can be addressed sometimes through behavior change communication. So being evidence based and equity promoting is critical and here we cannot see a better example than salvaging the vision of people at risk because of diabetes or other problems. And therefore, if we have to really advance our research into the action pathway for health programs, we now need to see that the National Program for Prevention and Control of Diabetes, Stroke, Cardiovascular Disease and Cancer is now also 
including the element of diabetic retinopathy. Similarly, the National Blindness Prevention Program too must bring its energy and attention to the prevention and treatment of diabetic retinopathy. So, the national programs at large which are now being integrated progressively into the national health mission will have to now gear themselves up whether through the NCD control programs or the blindness prevention control programs into recognizing the magnitude of this problem and tackling it quite effectively. Indeed, we do require this implementation research or the delivery science for two purposes. Firstly, we need the knowledge from research for implementation. Secondly, we need knowledge from research on implementation even when programs are actually being implemented to see whether they are functioning well to have embedded evaluation which will enable us to monitor closely the progress of the actual program elements and then see what mid course corrections are required and then to have an objective end line evaluation as to the actual impact of the intervention. And therefore, we require the kind of knowledge that has been generated from the situational analysis to sound a red alert to policy makers and the public alike as to the magnitude of the problem and the cost of neglect. At the same time, we must gear ourselves to support the policy makers and the program managers with operational research even as the program is being implemented so that we can increase the efficiencies of program delivery and then come forth with an objective end line evaluation. Therefore, this whole area of implementation research is becoming very important as the key link between innov innovation and impact. An innovation will not be an innovation if it is only stopping at the point of discovery. An innovation will be a true innovation if it completes the delivery as well. And indeed, a difference to be a difference must make a difference. And therefore, all this knowledge that is being accumulated through multidisciplinary research, which engages multiple health professionals, policy makers, civil society representatives, community representatives, must also be translated not only into effective policy formulation and program design, but also into program delivery which actually enables the intended beneficiaries to be protected from vision loss. And I am sure this, have, this effort which is being made through this national consultation to create a broad platform not only for the dissemination of this knowledge, but also for creation of new knowledge translation pathways into programs and policies will be eminently successful in raising the awareness as well as the action level related to diabetic retinopathy. And I believe in terms of our own public health expertise, the Public Health Foundation of India has the requisite multidisciplinary talent pool to provide support to this kind of a research endeavor. But mere research alone will not suffice. We need the attention and engagement of all other sections of society, the government in particular, but also the private sector, the civil society, community based organizations and so on. And therefore, this has to become a truly all of society effort and then and then only can knowledge be truly translated into a transformational endeavor. And I have full confidence that this consultation will provide the impetus for not only that kind of a coalition building, but also for ensuring that ultimately a large number of Indians will be protected from diabetic retinopathy and that they will be able to lead full and fulfilling lives with the vision that they can enjoy. Thank you.